And there we go again in game number three versus TCN, aka Sedinolis and Dream Team 168, Mr. PGG's team. It is game number three in the best of three. That means this game will decide who wins this series. And well, the last game was definitely interesting. Like each game, either team was dominating pretty much, but the other team, I don't know, held on, was trying to make some turns here and there. Uh, it was a bit more four for back in game one, but in game two we saw I TCN like really a straight line. Each and everything, the crafts showed it. They had nice pickoffs, nice team fights. They did really well. Like in a draft where I didn't see this one coming, I actually saw TCN not winning this just by the fact that the void uh, is gonna have a huge impact. But it turned out the void had no impact whatsoever this game not just by farm also by like the placement of the chrono it just failed completely two chronos missed and the rest of the chronos were just one man chronos and even there they didn't even manage to get the tight hunter down in the end arise was tanky i don't know it was <laughs> not even funny anyway my name is heflamog and of course casting with me is here granis we on pretty much my private channel because the other two are busy with gg league and star ladder and therefore we are here on this channel but you can still of course drop a follow if you respect the fact that sometimes, I'm f of course, I also uh, play on this channel here, gameplay, so you can watch my noob 4K MMR or something, playing with some players, of course, from the tier 2 scene most of the time. But either way, let's hop into the draft, Grandis. Let's see what we got this time. Yeah, well, no big surprises coming out from the draft of either teams. Doom Brewmaster taken out by Seed Nolas, and Tree at Marana taken out by Dream Team 168. Ancient Apparition was left in the pool, as well as the Tidehunter, so Dream Team 168 going to pick those two up for themselves. And already a huge team fight presence coming out from these two heroes. Seed Nolas going to first pick up the Shadow Demon, but they don't have the Marana to combo with it. Uh, but either way, just on its own, that Shadow Demon had some really good saves last game. So I can definitely see this first pick up Shadow Demon, and with the Invoker on top of that, yep. yeah, this... And I absolutely like the fact, I mean, there's there's two things I like already about this, or actually three things. First thing is, Dream Team is saying, Arise, please F you, because <laughs> the way you played Tidehunter last game was just amazing, so we pick it for ourselves. Ravage is always cool, being that tanky is always nice. Ancient Apparition is the second thing, I always like it, because in 6.8... In 6.8, I hated that hero, because it was picked all the time, it was like a first pick hero all the way like if you remember it was uh lycan batrider then aa invoker those four were for quite a while in 6.8 like the the first four to ban but then he, he slowly declined because people realized how to counter the ancient apparition etc there were especially with shadow demon coming up so people weren't chattering there were desert picks there were shadow demon picks etc and that's why I'm quite happy if I see Ancient Apparition now after 6.81b. Either way, Invoker on the other side, in a combination with the Shadow Demon, this is also very... I don't know, I like it, and I hope it's an Exort Invoker, because it's pretty much just like the Arrow Synergy. You go for the Disruption Soul Catcher build, and then the Invoker Sunstrike on top of it. It's a huge chunk of damage, and even the Shadow Demon alone can make something happen with the Invoker, of course, his Sunstrike Global Presence. So let's see how this goes. Second bun rotation going on. Yeah. Both teams have the start of something of a global lineup coming out from the Invoker and Ancient Apparitions. So I'll see if, um, or we'll see if they're going to build on top of that and maybe pick up something like, I don't know, let's see, what else is there left? Nature's Prophet uh, might be a good pickup for Seed Nullis with Synergize as well with the push coming out from uh, Forge Spirits uh, with those Treants as well. Um, I don't know, I think that could be a solid pick. Yep, absolutely. But... I don't know, Rave King coming out, the Exorcism TCN had really really bad experience in the first game with this one, like they were just pushing down everything so fast with the Exorcism and there was nothing they can actually do against it. A Conquer, a Conquer ban, I don't know, They're very interesting, I didn't see this one coming anyway, I'm also not quite sure if there's any crazy Conquer player on TCN's current uh, roster as it is here because they're anyway just uh, like a, a shuffle roster so we don't know who's actually playing in this roster next season like I guess in July they will be done with the roster shuffling after the TI and let's see if TCN makes the next step into tier 2 tier 1 Dota but yeah I don't know Kunka I didn't see it coming the Sand King is something you can always ban pretty much especially in the second ban rotation 
Yeah, I don't know. Kanka combos really well with the Shadow Demon, and I think would have been a good pickup for Seed Nullis. Maybe not in this pick stage, but maybe as a fifth pick. But Dream Team 168, gonna say no to that. And they'll go ahead and pick up the Earthshaker, yet another huge team fight ultimate. And the ability for them to wipe an entire team of Seed Nullis is definitely there. If they get clumped up, get caught up by a Ravage with the Echo Slam on top, Ancient Apparition Blast, that's pretty much a dead team. And it'll be very difficult to push high ground into this if they do get those Blink Daggers up. Yep, absolutely. I mean, well, we already have two candidates for the Plink Dagger, what you just said. The Earthshaker, I guess, I don't know, today, the Earthshaker, we saw once a PTG Earthshaker. Nice plays actually there on him, but it was mostly about the Fisher. When it comes to Echo Slam, we saw one Echo Slam, which was an absolute overkill. I think it was an Echo Slam on a, like a 100 HP target, where there were damage over time on him, as well as a lot of people that could right click. So that was absolute overkill Echo Slam. But besides that, we didn't see anything. Not a big, huge, fat impact Echo Slam. So let's see if Dream Team is going to go for it. Maybe PGG is going to pick up that Earthshaker again. Yeah, I don't know. His fissures were really on point, though. I quite enjoyed watching him take Earthshaker and. Well, he doesn't have his good setup here, uh, no Shadow Demon or other stuns to start out um, for those Fishers, but it didn't seem like he really needed it. He was able to get very good blocks as well as stuns off, and Seenol's going to pick up a Nyx Assassin here, presumably for their offlane hero. Yeah, absolutely. Um, um, well, Nyx offlane... I don't know, we need to see the fourth one. But on the other side, the morph, that's definitely interesting. I mean, with the Titan, the Ancient Apparition, Earthshaker, that's that's a lot of, I don't know, a lot of heroes that can buy enough time for the Morphling to actually get the farm up. And it's funny to see that Dream Team actually goes for such a draft in the last deciding game. Like all the other games, it felt like they want to they wanna have a rather short game or rather, rather solid game, very nice balance. But now it looks like, I don't know, uh, for Protect 1, maybe coming out, something like that. Or maybe the morph is just, no, I think they go for two cores. We don't have anything for the mid unless the Tidehunter is going there. Yeah, I think this is going to just be an Invoker Morphling mid matchup, and then they'll pick something else for their safe lane. But whether it's going to be something that's a traditional carry, or if it's going to be another space creator for their safe lane, I'm not sure. I don't know. They've been favoring the Vengeful Spirit. Don't think we'll see that again. Um, but, I don't know. Honestly, I haven't really watched Dream Team 168 enough to really see how they draft. And Seton Hall is going to pick up a Disruptor, so more than likely is going to be that offlane Nyx. Yeah, sorry, I'm just chatting oh, uh, with someone because <laughs> someone was like, yeah, you have new emotes. Uh, but I just see the turtle has to be reworked. Yeah, but yeah, for all the viewers out there, we try to make some nice emotes that actually, you know, work for... Things you regularly spam. Uh, wait, <laughs> now I have to actually chat. Keep talking, Grandis. I'm talking with the few as you talk about the draft. <laughs> Very well, okay. As far as Seed Nolis' draft is concerned, they probably have their safe lane hero left to pick up. Shadow Demon and Disruptor as a supporting duo really doesn't offer that much damage unless you get a lot of poison stacks up from the Shadow Poison, but even then, especially early on, the killing potential between those two supports is very limited. They need something else to round out to help them get those kills, and with a little bit of global uh, nuking presence from the Invoker, they might have the option to put some pressure, but I think this Tidehunter is going to have a decent time, at least in lane, up yep. against Shadow Demon and Disruptor. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Of course, TCN now needs a core, like something fat, because the Morphling is not going to make this easy, and to be honest, like, um, b both teams, I'm quite surprised actually, because DT, I already saw a PA being played by uh, by Dream Team, but I can imagine it uh, a PA being played here, like a PA that goes for a relatively yeah relatively early BKB would would easily survive against the Titan against the Earthshaker. Well, now with the Viper, it's uh, kind of awkward, but <laughs> I don't know. They need something to go against the Morphling because they have a tanky Titan, they have a Viper, they have the magical damage, the Ancient Apparition being a careful uh, like a dangerous factor in the team fights, Earthshaker also with the potential crazy echo slam in team fights. I don't know, it's I don't think TCN is drafting greedy enough. Yeah, neither I I'm not really sure what they're going to be doing in most of these portions of the game. Their landing phase <coughs> excuse me. Feels pretty weak. 
uh, with the Invoker versus the Viper. Viper probably going to win that lane. I'm not sure if they're really going to be able to zone out the Tide. This Morphling should be able to farm very well against the Nyx as well. So I think all three lanes are going to work decently well for Dream Team 168. And they're going to go for a Magnus. I really don't like this. They have a decent amount of things to combo up with the RP. You have a Static Storm to drop on top yeah. with a Nyx Impale to follow up. And if the Invoker is Exhort, which I think is a necessity this game. If he's not Exhort, I think Seed Null is pretty much just lost with the lack of damage that they have. But either way, um, no, with this that is combo... Carry Magnus. Uh, I mean, it's Arise picks up the hero. That means he's going ham with this hero. But still, I have to say it, it won't be enough. Like, Quix has to get crazy farm on that invoker and Arise has to be also crazy farm to make anything work here the titan to the morphling wiper like two heroes super tanky the morphling like rushing studs over time the longer this game goes the less likely it is that uh, TCN is coming out with a win here so I really don't like this draft I really don't I don't know scratch that Nyx assassin for example and pick something up maybe even why not picking a Rave King support, for example? I think, was it still in? I'm not quite sure. Mm, I think it was banned out. Not sure when, but I think it was one of the bans. I think it, yeah, I think it was banned in the second uh, ban stage, but either way, like, I remain, yeah, I stay with my opinion there. I think it's not greedy enough. But let's see, maybe they managed to get some nice pickoffs, some nice laning. And, well, uh, underfarmed morph, etc. Well, it's it's also dangerous for DT because maybe TCN gets very early momentum and can finish this game in time before it gets yeah too late for them. Either way, we're going to introduce the players really fast. And before, I have to give a shout out to Efren Dora. Thanks for subscribing. Welcome to the Hafla TV family. You got all the emotes and everything. And also, of course, for the subscribers, we plan a lot more things coming in, like by our sponsors. There will be giveaways, etc., where subscribers are just a latch for it. Either way, that's it. Back to casting. We have Arise now playing the Magnos. Like, nice set, by the way. I like this one. But <laughs> either way, I'm getting distracted by too many things. Be Water, my friend, is on the Shadow Demon. We have then here uh, Standing Key. They changed here. Um, the standing in the meantime is playing on the disruptor. Quicks, of course, on the invoker and Wern this time on the Nyx assessing. And now let's look at the radiant side. They are already smoked up, but it's running out. Well, on Dream Team 168, we're going to have ZXC playing on the Morphling. Viper is going to be taken up by Blow Your Brain. Earthshaker played again by PGG. Zonder on the Ancient Apparition, which will leave Afterlife playing on the Tide. Yep, absolutely. And we saw pretty much what we saw the game before. Five minutes more, going into the enemy jungle, trying to do something. Now on top of that, of course, PGG found a nice little invisibility rune. And with that, they might actually be able to do something, especially if Magnus is not holding back on the skills. Because he needs the school to get over the fissure. And now, actually, he's going for the empower just for the last hits. And nope, they're actually not doing anything with that invisibility rune. But in the meantime, oh, look at them. They found the fight hunter. But oh, yeah, well, that's, not, yeah, not really yeah, hap anything happening. It's this. This is just for us. I mean, it buys some time for quicks. Why not? Yep, I was watching up in top lane, but it looks like there might be something else. I don't know. Shadow Demon doesn't have the disruption for uh, quite some time. Nice Fissure coming out from PGG will split these supports up, but I'm not sure if they'll be able to get B Water, my friend. He tries to tango through trees, won't <laughs> be able to get out of here, and he's still blocked in, but a lot of damage going the way of the tide here. He's disrupted up. Kicks trying to get this kill, and well, now they're going to change targets and just not focusing heroes down, and not a lot of follow up for either of those spells. So both teams just going to trade a couple of cooldowns. Yep, it w it was so hilarious to watch how he tried to eat through all the trees, but like every time he took a tree away, the fisher just k kept like seemingly <laughs> expanding into the forest. He was like, "Damn it, it's never ending fisher," but oh well, it it was quite funny. But I mean, both like heroes here they didn't have any anything skilled that would actually potentially lead to a kill because Kraken Shell on a Tide Hunter which means he couldn't do anything on the Shadow Demon except for just right clicking and the right clicking of a Tide Hunter level 1 is not too amazing that's 56 or it's actually 54 uh, but I don't know and also Quicks he is not even level 2 if he was level 2 they could have done something maybe after the disruption but this way, it was just a huge chunk of regeneration that had to be used to get all this harass damage pretty much nullified. Yeah, and poor PG PGG, excuse me, trying to deward his small pole camp. Used two sentries for it. In doing so, blocked his own camp and still wasn't able to find the sentry ward. Very cheekily placed in order to uh, block that up. So, 
Not going to have that available for him for quite some time. P. Water, my friend, going to be sitting on a hay stream for the mag. And mag will secure that one. And, well, PGG trying to make something happen around level 1 Earth Shaker can uh, make some kills happen with the Fissure. But as of now, PGG hasn't been able to really accomplish much. Yep, and to be honest, the loser of all this at the moment is, is really the next assassin. and he doesn't get much at all. I mean, he doesn't get anything at all. He is zero and zero at the moment. He tried some side pulls here and there, but now this one is even getting uh, cleaned up by the Viper. Viper saying like, oh, thank you, like, cool, I got some of your creeps, I got the neutrals, everything's fine here. And I don't know, also the Disruptor, he got 2 CS, this is just not working out. And now even PG, PGG is coming here to reinforce, make it a try lane again. And maybe now with a good Oh, Cold Feet going the way of Key. The Fissure ah. going to be on the wrong side, however, it will latch with the Cold Feet. Key will be able to make it out alive. Had that Fissure gotten him on the right side, or left side, excuse me, yeah. of the Fissure, they would have well, been the, able to the get the right side would have been the left side, yeah. Yeah, yeah, the right <laughs> side would have been the left side. <laughs> that is correct. <laughs> but either way, it's 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 really that's always the gamble. If you like, really have the Fisher on 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 spot on a hero, sometimes it's really just a gamble where the hero lands. Sometimes you think you you point it a bit more to the right, but then he ends up on on the right side, and the right side being the actual right side, not as in the correct one. But either way, no first blood so far. Like last game, we actually had a first blood at seven minutes, r relatively late. And what is a rise doing here? Oh, like screw on. on. Yeah. In the tower, I mean, under the tower, that was, I don't know, three or four tower hits coming there. And he has to be careful because, well, Bottle is on its way, not even back. It's still on the way to the fountain. And as long as there's PGG with a potential block after the skewer has been used, that's really dangerous. If you skewer, I don't know, for whatever reason against the Morphling, and then you get suddenly caught out by a Fissure block here in the mid, like a straight line, this is very, very dangerous. Yeah, definitely. Magnus also has a glove of haste sending out to himself on the courier. So is that a hand of Midas for Mag? I don't know. I don't really like Midas on Magnus at all. I think getting an early blink dagger is best. And, well, I don't know. Power Treads could be okay to help him in lane. Well, let's but see. Now, the invisibility rune. This could be it. Disruption going the way of the uh, poor Morphling. And well-timed on the Skewer. Doesn't have RP available still in level 5. And ZXC going to be able to make himself or get himself away from that. Yeah, it's more. F I don't know. He already started uh, more strength. I mean, now he's out of mana and everything, which is of course good. He's kind of disabled for the time being, but I mean, yeah, the bottle is coming back, and then he won't care too much. In the end, he has more XP out of the lane than compared to Arise. But yeah, still, we are five minutes in. No first bloods happened, and to be honest, I think we're gonna see it here top. Pretty much soon. At the moment, the Nyx Assassin is so desperate, he's even trying to get some CS with Impale. But uh, but Jesus Christ, he has two CS five minutes into the game. Make that free. That's like, I have to celebrate it like it would have been a million dollar black hole. Because this guy is so poor. It, it really hurts to look at it. Yeah, well, at least on the plus side for uh, him, he has managed to find his level five, which is decent for an offlane hero at five and... A little bit more in. They're going to get vision with the icy vortex. And I'm not sure what he's trying to do here with the chilling touch. They should have plenty of damage to get this kill. They will impale up Zonder, but with the cold feet blocking and the fissure as well. He throws out the spike carapace to delay things for a little bit longer. Just a couple more auto attacks is all they need. Will they be able to find him? They will. And Why? Zonder draws first blood. Why did he wait with that TP? I think he was expecting to to be dead there, but somehow they they hesitated or like didn't move forward, and so he, I don't know. Like, he waited with that TP. I think he had the mana. Um, I'm not sure. Maybe it was the mana. He was waiting for a mana tick. I think he had 75 mana, but... Okay, that that will remain a mystery to me. I have to watch a replay for that, but... Wow. Okay, that was very interesting. But in the meantime, Morphling has a double damage rune. Ah, uh, Arise trying to get him here directly under the tower after the wave, but won't work out either way. I don't know. The Magnus... He went for PTs actually first, so he's going for some stats, going for some right click. I tell you, this is a this is a carry, carry Magnus. It's it's coming. Arise makes it happen. It's I don't know how it works out though. I I have my doubts. I do too, but it would be something interesting to see, and well, at least something new for me. Um, yeah, could no, be actually, cool. Let's... Uh, oh, who played it? Like in, we had another tier two team in the. 
last week or so, we actually had a Magnus with Daedalus and Battle Fury, shit like that. But of course, they were dominating the game, so that he had the luxury of going for things like that. But in the meantime, he smoked up. He's level oh, seven. Oh, disruption! They have the RP available. They're gonna throw a nice Nick Jason impale, and PGG just going to be blown up with the skewer coming out from the Magnus to secure that last hit. Yep. The shockwave actually, the score oh, wasn't yeah, yeah. even needed yeah, yeah. To, to be used. But I actually thought maybe he wants to go for more if the Viper shows some sort of life sign going closer, then he can screw in from the side. Then again, this score is only level 1, so you won't make too much range with it. That's a problem. But on the downside, of course, getting one kill there, sure, but I mean, a smoke was used for that one. Plus, Morphling is farming at the same time. He's level 8, and I don't know. It's. Oh, <laughs> there was a nice fake RP. For now, but PTG is already back there, oh, so Fisher. Yep. By the way, last time I actually saw like someone being blocked in here where I just mark it. Like it's it's a really dangerous spot. If you get Fisher directly on those like little pillars or like those banners in the mid. Oh, my oh God. RP on the back line. It's going to catch out Afterlife. Sunstrike going to be completely off the market. Looks like he uh, scared it away. Now the Ravage spent by Afterlife as well. To try to retreat out with the Morphling backup. He's gonna throw the shockwave oh, and it will catch it. out. Wow. That was what a that, shockwave. That was just on the edge of the shockwave's range. It was really like it was even the end of the animation, but he still gets the kill, so TCN now in the lead. Well, this is the best thing of course that could happen for Magnus, but in the meantime we have a go here and it will be a go on the Viper. For now, being slowed, there's a disruption and Sun Strike. Ah, Sun Strike will already be enough with the Soul Catcher. That's exactly what I said in the draft. I like this combination. This is also why we don't have like the I don't know, Shadow Poison build, where Purge claims that he invented it, but, <laughs> okay, never mind, no, no rants on Purge today, but, um, yeah, he went for the Soul Catcher build, so more points in Soul Catcher, because you know you have a 100% Sunstrike hit, if it's, of course, correctly done by Quicks, and therefore, it's absolutely worth to go for that more amplified damage. Yeah, and they've been on point with their timing with the, um, Disruption into Sunstrike pretty much every time it's been on point. I mean, not the hardest combo to land, but something that they've at least practiced and, well, it's been doing well. Everybody in this top lane is fairly low on mana. They have TP'd up kicks, but I don't think he can really throw out any spells. They might have a cold snap, but I think PGG will be just fine and we'll just hang back here in the top lane. Yeah, I don't really know why that rotation happened. I guess Quicks just wants to, I don't know, show you some presence or maybe he's afraid that soon some rotation will come. I mean the Viper also rotated bottom up but I don't know, he, I don't think he saw that. The Viper was, by the time he TP'd out, the Viper was pretty much at the tower so he couldn't, no, he couldn't have known that this is gonna happen but okay. Now Quicks is of course on the top lane, PGG just throwing a random Fisher out, just saying hello, throwing some stones literally but I don't know, Arise now coming in the jungle before he goes back to the base, being very efficient. But I'm I'm worried about ZXC. I mean, ZXC, he had probably the, the worst game of his life. I know that he is a good player. I know that he can do much better. But his Void last game was just horrible. This time here in mid, I mean, he stays on at mid. He doesn't respond to anything. He doesn't TP around. He doesn't uh, rotate with the others whatsoever. He's just going for levels and to be honest I mean he has a Midas ticking Aquila already the bottle as well as the boots now he can just go get the first starts with the PTs and I guess we can see a shotgun rush very soon like I guess he will finish PTs and then why not going directly into Ghost Scepter well let's see what else is happening well yeah uh, just a couple of item pickups for now no huge aggressive rotations coming out from both teams a lot of Midas is this game I believe that's our third uh, going to be finished up by uh, Kicks to round things off. It is a uh, fairly late Midas, um, but for uh, going Power Treads for still a decent timing for the Invoker and will pay off. On Exhort Invoker, I don't think there's a real reason not to go for the Midas. And look at this, we have the first Vendetta. It comes pretty much late. The first Vendetta happening at the 11th minute. He's... Oh god. In the mid, they just obliterated that poor Disruptor. In the meantime... Well, Nyx was scouting out the Viper, there is the Vendetta hit, but oh my god, Wern, that Impale, not hitting. Meantime, Arise is there, the Dagger is still in the stash, he needs that Dagger ASAP, of course. Maybe he could make uh, something work, or something happening here on that Morphling, but he needs some follow-up damage, of course. That's the biggest problem. And now it actually gets quite dangerous for uh, for the supports, because a Morph that is level 10 in the 12th minute, like this is a level 4 waveform, that's a lot of damage, of course, oh. and... Uh, let's Pretty see. much sums up what happens in the middle lane. Uh, RP was juked out by Ryze. It seems Old like top, he... Ravage. 
Oh, Ravage spent onto the Invoker of Sunstrike, going to land on Zonder, split between some of the creeps. He will get the Ancient Apparition kill before going down to the Tide, and, well, at least making something out oh. of a bad situation for the Invoker. Yep, but still, and Nyx just got out the Viper. That's, of course, very dangerous. And there is the Impay stun, and he is in the Kinetic Field, and there's the Shockwave. Easy for our Ryzezy. Oh, well. <laughs> but I liked, I actually like what Quicks did there. I mean, he knew, oh my god, they, they commit the entire Ravage just for me, so I might as well just do the best out of it. Sunstrike, the Forge Spirits, and of course the, the one right click. I th you think even without the right click, the AA would have gone down. So he did the best with his death. That was very efficient play. I definitely like it. So he keeps TC and still having this two kills lead. We're gonna swap to the net worth so everybody's getting an impression how the farm is going. Obviously Morph is gonna be top, but oh my oh, god. Oh, Blink nice Skewer on here. PGG. He has the uh, RP, probably doesn't want to use it. Nice Impale will land. And one more smack from the Magnus. There's a Morphling here. They still have the RP. Sunstrike going to be on the mark coming out from the Invoker. Now oh, RP on the two. Nice. Nicely played by the Magnus. Barely grabbing both of them, but he will be uh, stopped up by the Cold Feet. And it looks like Morphling will be able to make it out. That RP, but it, Jesus, it was just on, on the edge of pulling even the Morphling in, but it doesn't really matter. There was the AA as collateral damage, so in the end they traded two supports for one. Uh, definitely a trade you want to do, but oh my god, there is a Fissure. Unfortunately, right after this disruption, Quix was blocked here on this side of the Fissure, so he had to walk all the way around. Otherwise, this might have actually been something. Then again, Earthshake is also having now yeah, his level 6, which means there is an Echo Slam, but Arise. Arise. He's arising out of the secret shop area and he wants PGG. There's the they Vendetta. They open up with a cold snap. Here comes the Vendetta and PGG is very <laughs> dead. Didn't even need to throw out the shockwave. They don't even need it. They don't even need it. So this is four kills lead at the moment for TCN. And well, DT has to be careful that TCN is not getting a momentum that they won't stop. Because we had that actually in the last game. DT's answer of uh, TCN's aggression in the last game was more or less... Okay guys, we got the better heroes by draft, let's just hold back, farm here and there. But the problem is it turned out that TCN got their pickups and everything. And Arise is just such a <laughs> player here, he's really trying to make all the plays. Score attempt, he's trying that pretty much on cooldown. But Afterlife of course, now being in the mid with the Ravage ready, that's something you have to be very careful about. Okay, well Arise has a Perseverance finished, is that a Refresher or a Battle Fury? Um, I don't want to say it because I actually think there's a good chance we see a Battle Fury. <laughs> no, I, I yeah. actually do. I think he's he's just relying on the fact that he has been very nice with the RPs and everything and then going for Oh, the in the mid, another RP skewer to follow up back into the loving arms of the Invoker. They're going to drop the Echo Slam onto two, but it's not going to matter. PGG will die in a double kill for kicks. <laughs> I, was just, I was just talking about the nice RPs and, well... There we go. And this might actually end up in a tier 1 tower. Then again, of course, Ancient Apparition is there. Not level 6 yet, so there's no Ice Blast that is annoying the other enemy team. And the problem is also no one else is in range. If they knew that Tide Hunter is here, Ancient Farming, they might actually even go for it. They could kill him, plus the Ancients. But unfortunately, no, they didn't spot it out. There, there has been like some sort of Sentry Ward war. But the problem is both Sentry Wards are standing next to each other, but there's no vision on it. Nighttime on top of it, so nobody's actually de-warding the Sentry Ward. So whoever is first in that area will get this deny on the wards, or the de-ward rather. But now, they want to go... Here for the Morphling, ZXC under the tower, Shadow Demon hiding now in the trees. Oh, if he shows, that's quite dangerous. He has only 850 HP pull. That's level 2 Adaptive Strike. He is, okay, not too far into Agility, but now, oh my god. PGG's Fisher not blocking him in. Yeah, they will start out with the waveform. Another glimpse back, I believe that was on the Morphling. Disruption actually caught the Morphling uh, back after he was disrupted. Uh, but will keep the water, my friends, safe. And Tier 1 Tower on the bottom line does get denied by the Morphling. So in the end, uh, not the hugest issue. However, in the meantime, Roshan was being taken by yep. the Invoker with those Forge Spirits as well as the Necronomicon and was able to finish that up fairly effectively. And Kix now has an Aegis of the Immortal. Yep. Uh, also, a tower deny happened here on the tier 1, but nevertheless, tower down is tower down. So that's quite some gold influx coming here for TCN, as well as, of course, the 6 kills gold, uh, 6 kills gold lead, I say. Uh, 6 kills lead, and we have a look into the graphs, and look at the experience. There's 4k, oh, do we have a go? 
I don't want to show crafts when maybe the Nyx is actually going here for afterlife, but he's alone. Maybe with the Invoker Sunstrike. There, yeah, Vendetta, Impale, it actually hits, but no Sunstrike. It's just more or less harass. He's not even going for anything, and maybe there's even a turnaround with AA Plus. Uh, no, it's not coming. There's no dagger on the Titan. It actually might be bought now. Yes, he actually buys the dagger as I speak. Anyway, I'm gonna use this short break just to show the graphs again. 5000 XP lead at the moment for TCN, and when we have the gold, it's pretty much the same graph, just for another currency. It is, of course, gold. So it's looking quite decent, but then again, it's the 17th minute, and this gold lead we saw it in the other games, it can turn around with one big fight. One huge fight, maybe even some buyback spend, and it can turn around. So this is nothing game deciding yet. And the fact remains, DT has still a better late game, but in the mid, the AA Blast, oh, the Ice Blast was just looking for the Disruptor, but not finding him. Yep, a lot of spells were missed in this middle lane. Arise is working towards that Battle Fury and has it completed, sending it to himself on the Courier. Down in bottom, the rest of his team is pushing down towards this tier 2 tower, mostly just with the summons coming out from the Invoker. Everybody's pretty spread out. And Dream Team 168 might be able to get a pick off here. I don't know. Looks like the smoke is going to be uneventful. Mm, Shadow Demon? Shadow Demon does. Shadow oh my god, Shadow Demon. Demon. Shadow Demon, you poor guy. He's still slowed. Oh my god. Oh, Fisher PGG's from Fisher. PGG. Ah, this Fisher. Well, Fisher. Arise. He's looking for blood, has the RP, he's going to skewer back the HF version into an RP on the two with the static sword drop, but with the haste it looks like he's just going to chase down afterlife. Where's the backup for him? It doesn't look like there is any. He's going to uh, take away a little bit of that damage from the Magnus, but with that Battle Fury, he just doesn't he care. Now he's looking for a glimpse back onto PGG. He's going to try to TP back out, but with the intel coming out from the excess, and they'll be able to get that. What a beautiful play from Ryze. Yeah. That skewer into the RP, my goodness. And look at his items. Look at his items. I was right. There was a good chance, a really fair chance that he goes Battle Fury and there is the Battle Fury. No refresher, it is Battle Fury action and I love it. This is a tank, uh, tanky, what am I saying today? Like, Jesus. It is a carry Magnus. I, I love it. It's, it's just amazing. Let's see how it works out. I mean, on paper still, a Wiper more setup wins, but either way. There's a fair chance that he really gets some awesome a uh, RPs off, and then you saw it, like AA for example, he just melted, like he melted in seconds. I don't know. Arise has really impressed me these last few games with this Tide Hunter as well as oh, this Magnus. Oh, but top, top, top nice they are going quick switch to set a Oh. With the deafening blast, only caught the very back end of that, but Kix is looking to die here. Willie's the Aegis, but getting a kill on the Morphling definitely worth it. I'd trade an Aegis for Morphling any day. Yeah, absolutely. The Morph was was quite confident that he gets that kill on Quicks, but Quicks surviving, uh, surviving with I don't know 200 HP, and then the Morph was already oh he's going oh for he's more, looking for even... more cold snap taken off by the uh, Kraken shell uh, <laughs> Sunstrike. A little bit of miscalculation there. And it looks like he'll survive. Going to be harassed a little bit more by the Necronomicon minion. It's just going to dive past oh, the tier 4. Let's go Biggie down the bottom. Viper. They've caught out. Blow your brain. And well, no, no skewers just yet by a rise. They have the glimpse available. It looks like Blurry Green's very dead. Now they'll screw him. HF version ultimate not going to land on the Nyx S. And he'll survive with bottle charges. And a oh, godlike streak. Now the Blink and Ravage going to catch out everybody. A rise. Looks like he might fall. No, I don't think so. With the defensive disruption. And while they need to be careful, Ryze has the RP to spend, and he might just decide to turn this up top. Invoker going to get a tier 2 tower, they're TPing back, trying to catch him out. Sunstrike onto the TPing and Hero, and kicks. No other way to lock him down, no detection on the yep. ground, either for the Ghost, Ghost Rock, walk. and he'll be just fine. By the way, I was so surprised that Ryze did not go for the RP. I mean, this was pretty much the same scenario like we had already in the enemy jungle, just, a, I don't know, like, what, two, three minutes ago? Like, he had the RP, he had everything else, he even had support this time. Just the only difference was no haste rune, of course, on him. But I think he could have turned around and just RP'd the Titanter plus the AA. AA would have died for sure. And the Titanter maybe made it away here and there, but I don't know. I think that was really worth to go for, but he decided to not RP this time. So I don't know. Well, and Magnus building up a lot of gold here. 3,400 in the bank. Not sure what his next item is going to be. To be honest, I really haven't seen a lot of carry Magnus. I'd assume BKB would be good. Um, but we'll have to see. There's Smokey up in the middle lane. Looks like Ancient Apparition is very dead. Blink, skewer back into the rest of the team, and Zondar is going to fall very quickly. Yep, easy kill. That AA, to be honest, like the Ice Blast so far, not having any impact whatsoever. Oh, at all. Fisher. 
Okay, this is actually awful. a dangerous fisher. If there was a plink dagger on PGG. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, but quicks. Quicks is. No. Yeah, the combination of quicks and arise. Like, arise actually rotate the top there and I get an easy kill. Again, on ZXC, on the morphling. And this is looking really dire now for the rainy inside. I love to say that. But I don't know. It's. They have the Morphling, they have the Wiper, they have the RP, but so far it's exactly like game number two. TCN getting all the pickoffs, and DT decides to, guys, okay, no, we don't go for team fights because it's too dangerous because of Arise and the RP, but it's not working out. There's pickoffs, he and their AA dying, Morphling dying for the second time, they even got, uh, I don't know, multiple AA kills, even a Tide Hunter went down. The only one not dying that often is the Viper, but in the end TCN just getting too much farm, this time also getting towers, capitalizing on it, Roshan, etc. Everything's happening and they want even more. Look at the Nyx Assassin. Blow your blow brain. Blow your brain. Going to get the Vendetta hit. The Sun going to be on the mark. Now with the Sun Strike. They'll be able to blow up blow your brain. Maybe. Let's see. Those are the mechanisms. He's very tanky. Stunned up by the Spike Carapace. And Shockwave thrown out. Fisher blinking from Afterlife. He's going to get the Ravage onto everybody. Now the Ancient Apparition Ultimate lands. And it looks like it's going to be a full retreat from TCN. Will they be able to catch anybody out? Blink away from the Magnus Kicks. Going to drop down a Meteor. Just a zoning Meteor there. But, well, that is the team fight power of Dream Team 168. Yes, I've been just talking about and finally, like as a response of a very, very tanky Viper, of course, it was just not fast enough. That's the problem. It was just not fast enough. Then locking them all in place, the ancient, uh, ancient operation Ice Blast was even hitting on all, like not even all of them got it because two of them died even before the blast hits. But this is exactly what DT needs to come back in this game. But in the meantime, oh, we have a go here on the Titan Hunter. The Sunstrike already hit and now, oh my god, it's enough. It will be enough. Yes, there goes the dominating streak by Afterlife. Necro units, it's just ouch. <laughs> Pretty much sums it up. Ouch. Kix has been able to find a lot of good pickoffs, and well, the Magnus as well as the Invoker survived through that last team fight. So even though it was a big loss, they still have the RP available, and I think uh, maybe Team Seed will wait out for this next Roshan and then push into the mid tier two. Uh, Roshan yep. timer, still don't know exactly what it's going to be, and the next item for the Magnus is going to be an Assault Curious. I don't know, I like this quite a bit more than the Battle Fury, I think. Um, but either way, good aura for his team, and... Well, very fast Roshan timer too, so very fortuitous for Seed Null. So he should be able to take a fight. They're looking for a pickoff to start things off, however. Going yep, through the enemy but jungle. they're being watched all the way. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but PGG, oh my god, PGG. There's a Sun Strike, and it will be absolutely enough. And now without PGG's Fisher, this is really dangerous for DT. So they have to go back, they have to really take care... Uh, of the heroes, they can't go alone in any lane. Also, this ancient apparition really makes me sad. We're 25 minutes. He's level nine, far away from any decent items. The urn with two charges. I think these are the first two charges he has in this game. I don't know. It's it's just not working out for him. So TCN finishing off that tier two tower in the mid, and arise, arise, looking already for something. No, he's actually not looking for anything. He wants ZXC. He really Whoa. wants him. There's no other backup, but he might just go for a solo kill with the Sunstrike no, help is, from... This is RP, and then the... Oh, yep, Sunstrike. Sunstrike, he's strength morphing, he's pretty tanky, but with the skewer, it's going to be plenty of damage coming out from Horizon. I don't know, just making the plays with this yeah. Magnus. I mean, he has 245 uh, plus damage. Okay, now that just changed because he changed the PTs, but approximately 250 right click. Plus, of course, the AC, which gives him another minus uh, 5 armor, and the Sunstrike, of course, by the Invoker. So, you see, like, Arise versus Morphling, it works. And the funny thing is, Quicks, he's, like, absolutely multitasking at the moment. Going for Roshan, like a casual Roshan, in the meantime, just contributing to the kill on the Morphling. That's exactly how efficient you should play. So, with that new Aegis and 11 kills adva advantage, of course, TZN, I think it's high ground time. They think I, I think they should do it now. Yep. Not I waiting think you even wait longer. For 45 seconds until you have RP before you try to push it, but start pushing out the lanes now, and then once you have that RP, it's it's go time. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> I don't know. It's it's. Uh, I think if they wait another 10, 15, 20 minutes, and a morph get some farm here and there, as well as like uh, the Titan Hunter, maybe. Okay, he went for four stuff, blink dagger build. But I don't know. I don't think he should wait any longer. Now, Disruptor, well, he's making like an interesting curve here. He might have actually got uh, been caught out there. But there's a nice ward here. Oh, oh Skewer, it's on the replicate. It will time out. 
or rather be destroyed. Nice vision will catch you out now. Blink and Ravage going to land on all of the enemy heroes, but where's the follow-up? HF version ultimate's fairly late. They will uh, skewer up Afterlife, but now the RP coming out from the Magnus. He's not cleaving enough here, not getting any kills, and now here comes PGG with the ultimate. Everybody's low, nobody's dying. There's the Aegis on the Invoker. Finally, Haystrun with uh, a rise. Looks like he'll be able to chase down PGG, and eventually he will. Viper fell in the back lines of that fight, and it looks like TCN might be able to do it. Sunstry going on oh, nice with the Shockwave. Combo. Arise. <laughs> nice combo. That was amazing. Beautifully done. The Sunstrike and Arise coming in with the Shockwave, and that just tipped over the poor Morphling. We have to already look into the buybacks and look at it. 600 gold missing for ZXC here. Oh, there's Yule Scepter, Titan Hunter. Hunter. Nice four staff will keep him alive for now. And well, I think TCN should just oh, go this. back for the base. They're going to go for a skewer. Well, uh, not going to catch that time. And well, Ancient Apparition Ultimate looks like it'll get the kill on the Disruptor here. No. Who needs that? You have. Oh, well. Nope. See, that's what I meant actually with a disruption in, in the yeah. draft. I, I said it in the draft that like disruption is really, especially if that's level 1 and it's still level 1, then it's not enough and you can just prevent shattering with the disruption. This time it actually, I don't know, he did it quite early, but it was pretty much on the edge. Now it's pretty interesting though that Warren remains in the base, he just wants to see just in case someone is coming up and Arise disconnecting, but TCN not pausing. Okay, never mind. Now they pause. <laughs> Sex. Well, uh, I yeah. wanted to say something. <laughs> Very well. Bottom set of racks have gone to the way of Seed Nullis, and I don't see them stopping. Uh, well, <laughs> there you go. Uh, <laughs> I had to. Sorry, I had to. Like, usually the golden rule is casters never say anything, but this one had to. It was, yeah. Sorry, <laughs> I interrupted you. Okay, very well. <laughs> I'm not sure what to say after that. <laughs> uh, well. <laughs> Be water, guys. <laughs> okay, casters versus players. I don't think we we win this one. They are five. And actually, if we do the wrong thing, they are ten plus admin. So we should just keep quiet. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I think this is fairly straightforward. First seed Nullis. Don't think they need to wait for the next row, Sean. I think they can just rinse and repeat and... Go up high ground again. Let's see. Yeah, their ultimates are coming off of cooldown fairly quickly. Just need to wait for a rise to maybe get a little bit more health on his person. Pick up his next item with that 4600 gold. And, oh. Well. Yep. What's actually the next one? What is he going for? Like 4600? You think he's going crit? I think so. Yep. It's, I think it might be the best choice. I mean, there's no evasion coming in, I don't know, a billion years. And... I don't know. Oh, I really hope. Oh my god. Like, I think we had that once already where Arise was disconnected and uh, he had to run to an internet cafe or something. But then the problem new PC, new keyboard, new mouse, new settings, and you have to adjust everything, etc. You're in a rush. I really hope it's not in, like, I don't know, somehow influencing TCN's game here. Because right now they're pretty much owning. We also have to look at the crafts now that we have the time anyway. Experience wise, 20k. And yeah, heading towards that 20k in gold as well. But the big but is coming. We still have, we saw it actually once, just a single time. We still have the Ice Blast onto the Ravage, into the Acro Slam, Morphling, I don't know, Waveform on multiple targets, Shotgun maybe later, which is also very nice scaling with uh, certain stuff. But by the way, it's not even, it's not gonna be Shotgun. He has Plate of Alacracy here. Which means he's going for a Yasha right now, just to get some more agility up. And then, of course, the stats of the Manta helping him as well with forth and back morphling. But he's going for, like, I don't know, how how do you call that build <laughs> on on morph? <laughs> like, if he, if he skips the shotgun completely and just goes for, for stats core items. But uh, either way, I don't, I don't, I I don't, I don't think that's good. I really don't think it's good because he could still shotgun the Disruptor, the Nyx after Carapace and everything. It would even help um, to get it versus Magnus because if Magnus is shotgunned while he RP'd or after he RP'd and is munching through your supports or potentially other heroes, then the shotgun would help because he can't attack. 
Like the biggest damage source at the moment is really the Magnus with all his AoE. Cleave. He has double cleave, of course, body and power, by the battle fury. The shockwave on top of it, at least on two, three targets. The RP. Well, the damage is kind of nerfed. It only does 200 damage, and I'm glad it's nerfed. Otherwise, we would have seen in, in 6.8, 6.81 even more uh, Magnus pickups. But I don't know. Let's see. I don't think. Oh god, what is Wern doing here? <laughs> Just random impale on the Titan, uh, saying hello and then going back. Yeah, I don't know. At this point in the game, I think he can afford to do that. But yeah, just a little weird play coming out for the Knicks. Uh, let's see. Magnus, I still want to see what he's going to buy. I uh, still have no idea. But yeah, the Morphling build, really lackluster. He just doesn't do anything up until now. He might survive with the BKB, but even then, like, he still dies so quickly. Yeah, that's the problem. And, and BKB doesn't help you against RP. That's the problem. Like, the Sunderation of RP is just the same. Like, you will get locked in place. You will get at least two free hits uh, in you, regardless of the BKB. And if it's true, and he's going for crit, yeah, he, he went for crit. Look at it. Crystalus is up 2.8k, uh, 3k on top of him. He's taken out creep waves completely, just with the right clicks and the right angle and everything it's I don't know as soon as he has this data loss finished wow now it, there's a little puppy pause by uh, Titan so I don't know what's happening here maybe PGG's AFK or so or the ancient apparition but look at it what <laughs> the Nyx is even drawing it on the map what they're supposed to do they want to go and wrap around here into the already open lane but I don't think that's a too good idea. I think they should go for a high value kill. That would be, for example, the Titanta. Titanta having no buyback, meaning if you get the Titanta killed, that's pretty much a free Rax. I don't see how they how they can defend it if the Titanta is down without the Ravage. Uh, oh no, Ryze doing a little dance. Please don't spend that RP. Yeah, um, it's it's prone to happen. Like I've I've seen it so many times that. They were playing around with this, but I guess he gets a bit overconfident here. Well, yeah, I don't know. I'm not even sure if Dream Team 168 can pull off the wombo combo. PGG still doesn't have a blink dagger, and he won't get it before the end of this game. Two bracers and a gem on him. I don't know, just trying his best to tank up, but he's just going to have to waddle in uh, in order to get the Echo Slam off, and I don't yep. know. They have to spread properly because we have the blink dagger initiation on the Titanta, which means if he gets an awesome Ravage off, then this is really dangerous. At the moment, the Nyx is doing some split pushing as well as the Shadow Demon. So all three lanes at the moment saying hello. The Ancient Aberration has to take care of. The problem is that Creep's much stronger. Oh, here mid. comes the Ravage. Mostly just on a rise. They're going to follow up with the Fissure Defensive Disruption on top of him. And well, RP going to Chow Run 2. And just look at the damage coming up. A rise getting a couple of good crits. And now ZXE going to die as well. A rise going to skewer aggressively forward into the enemy team. He might die and he will. That's a lot of gold going the way of the Ancient Aberration. But it looks like they're going to lose Blow Your Brain. Instant buyback from the Magnus. He's going to be back in the this fight very quickly. Thought I think he bought boosters travel. Uh, no, just a normal no. TP scroll, saving his money. Um, tier one tower is still there, but yeah, damage on a tier three is already happening. But now the TP is Viper's already there. E warding. Oh, there's actually Yule Scepter. They still have vision on it. Oh, oh the strike stun. with the stun on top and Viper. This was a dieback. This was a dieback. He just used his, and now, oh god, this is at least one set of racks, and the GG. Yep. Yeah, definitely nothing makes sense. Over. They're going to maybe get a couple of kills before the uh, bell is uh, told, but no, oh, no, Afterlife just going to feed here. Oh, Either way. it wasn't enough. But what a game by TCN. They win this series 2 1, but in what a convincing fashion. Like, it's the first time I've seen a Magnus carry in a long time, and even one that actually gets all the farm together to be really dangerous. 17 and 1. And this 17 and 1 was also just because he, he, I think he could have even gone back after. But yeah, the Viper with damage over time got him. But either way, guys, thanks for tuning in. My name is Heffalam Oak. Casting with me was Grandis, of course. Always an honor to cast with this guy. It's always fun with you. And yeah, thanks for, I don't know, just sticking around here on, on my channel. Uh, as I said, Hafa TV is a label with three English channels. This is usually my private one where I also stream like gameplay. I probably even leave the stream on and just uh, play some. But on the other channels, Hafa TV one and two. If you wanna uh, know what games we cast there, then just follow them. And also, again, shout out to Afrendola. Thanks for the uh, uh, subscribe. That always helps us. As I said, we're always doing this for a hobby. We ignore school, studies, family, everything, just to bring you all the games that 
sometimes no one really wants to cast, but they're still worth to cast. I mean, look at this amazing game. That's why we do it, and yeah, we're honored that we can bring this to you. If you want to support us, of course, Facebook, Twitter, and even for our Russian or CIS friends, we have a VK account, like Hafla TV at VK. So just follow, like there, and you will always get the newest news. And therefore, thank you over and out. I'll leave the stream on. I will play some later. Just have to grab a bite. See ya.